slow poker. I have a career and a family, but also play poker, which doesn't leave me much time. So let's get to it. Another poker vlogger meetup game tips off soon, so I'll do a little pregame shoot around. And there's no more magical teammate than Aaron Aflalo. I raise to 50 over a straddle limp and get called by the big blind, straddler, and limper. After this flop, here's how the hand should play out. Everyone checks to the preflop aggressor, namely this guy. This guy bets. Action player in the big blind calls with his draw. UTG calls and limper folds. I probably bet turn with a nut blocker, and if I get called, it's a captivating conclusion. While that's how the hand should should play out. Should only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. No, wait, right, whatever. Here's how the hand actually plays out. Big blind checks and UTG dunks for 120. This is almost always just top pair. And there are two plays I could run. Since big blind's clearly about to auto call to chase his draw, I could flat, especially with the ace of spades in hand. But I decide instead to run the other play and big blind's not gonna be happy about it. All in. All in. Huh? <laughs> you? Okay, let's go, Fred. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna call my buddy. <laughs> that was just the part I wanted. I'll fold. Just sit outside. No, I can't fold, dog. You're, if you got kings, you're good. And Big Blind would have hit his draw, so thanks under the gun. I did get all the glory, but as the good book says, there's no oop without an alley from an Optima. <laughs> I've got ace jack, raised to 20, and both blinds call. On a jack high flop, the blinds check, I bet 25, small blind folds, and big blind check raises to 125. In some cases, you absolutely should not fold top air top kicker. On a king high flop, after two checks, I bet 15, and cutoff raises. Correction, he tries to raise. 20. No, I can't mean, uh, 30. 30. But other times, it's trickier. The red chip poker brains feel that this spot is close. It could be a value jam and could be a purely exploitative fold, and the decision is both stack dependent and villain dependent. Given all the factors in front of me here, I feel confident that this is the right move. Right, you got a set, you're good. Ducks? And Big Blind confirms my read and tells me exactly how he feels about my fold. Top, top? Oh, Look, I am not a poker genius, and sometimes my reads are not great, but this time I was pretty certain, and it's not too long ago that I would not find this fold, so I must admit, it feels good to know that I'm growing. I'm a big kid, look what I can do. I can wear big kid pants too. Mommy, wow! I'm a big kid now. There's no time to celebrate my graduation to big boy pants because the very next deal I've got ace king. So I raise to 20 and get called by the hijack and button. And I flop the Kathy. I bet 30 and button calls. After a turn, that's relatively appealing. I bet 50 and then... All in. All in. Call. Call to all in. Ooh, that was a quick call. I tell the button that yes, it was a quick call, and explain that despite the name slow poker, I can move fast. Furthermore, he should always listen closely. <laughs> Devo didn't instruct me to leisurely slide in my stack. They were unequivocal that I should whip it and whip it good. So don't look at me. I do what I'm told. Go forward. Move ahead. Understood. To the mailbag we go. Do you only play pocket aces? Vomit emoji. First of all, my apologies that my range causes you digestive stress. Now I could tell you that I play other whole cards, but that rockets by their very nature more commonly result in larger, more interesting hands, and those hands are more likely to make a highlight reel, and that when I play a suited connector and take down the flop with a semi-bluff c-bet, or win a couple hundred three-betting ace-queen offsuit from the small line and get two streets of draw-chasing value, those hands just aren't intriguing enough to include on a poker blog. Sort of like how hockey highlights feature more goals and saves than, you know, icing. I could tell you that, but we all know the truth. Aces or fold. I've got aces, and after low jack bets 15 and hijack and cutoff call, I'm conflicted. Not because I don't want to play this hand in position, because I do, but because I'm racking up for a table change. And all I hear from poker players is that it's bad luck to play from the rack. Fellow vlogger Jamin Burton recently open folded pocket kings as he was racking up, because the curse is too terrifying. But I'm just not a superstitious guy, so despite impending doom, I flick in the call. And while technically the flop gives me nothing but this, inside I'm giving myself one of these. And after low jack bets 25 and the others fold, I can consider raising, given I've got higher equity than overpairs, but instead I call and see what turns up, and that turns up. Lojack starts to assemble chips, but then changes course and checks. What happens next I can't quite explain. There's the unnatural feeling of playing from the rack that's throwing me off, there's the vibe that hijack will never fold no matter what I do, and there's the powerful urge to debunk a silly superstition in the most extreme way possible. Regardless of the reason, my gut's telling me to go one way, so I go that way. Oh. Superstitions. <laughs> you got nothing on me.
All in. I call. Fuck. I've got eight seven of hearts, and five players limp at the straddle. After a nice flop, everyone checks, and I toss in 20, but can't stop laughing to myself while I bet. And why? Because there's a very special player in the low jack. The name's Chase. Chase anything. Chase here plays any two cards, and will call any bet, regardless of equity. I am not exaggerating when I say that Chase anything will chase anything. And when I say anything, I mean eh, me. Chase just called an overbet flop shove with queen nine offsuit and only two outs, one of which he rivered of course, and also stacked pocket aces in a disgusting way with king deuce off. So when I place this bet, I know that if Chase anything calls, I probably won't see that 20 again. And bye bye President Jackson, as Chase calls. On this turn he bets 35 and I couldn't fold faster if I tried. <laughs> Chase Anything asks how I could possibly know what he had. I tell him, the jack, the nine, they were in your eyes. It's probably the nuts. It's probably the nuts. I've got ace queen, and after UTG raises to nine, I consider a three bet, but flat instead. As does the button. Small blind folds, and vlogger Brad Owen folds. Because he's a scared little baby. You heard me, Owen. Come at me, bro. On this flop, everyone checks. On this turn, everyone checks. On this river, everyone checks. No way, three straight flushes. <laughs> And just like that, an otherwise boring chop gift wraps me the clickbaitiest episode title in the history of clickbait. I mean, it's not a lie. Three straight flushes right there, Brad Owen right there. You may feel misled, but it's still the truth. Do I feel remorse? Eh, honestly, I do. But don't hate the player, hate the game. And hey, if you're appalled by that, well, brace yourself for what's coming. I've got aces, and raised to 20 over two limps. Folds around to the big blind, who repops to 80. To quote a scared little baby, what a dream. First limper folds, second limper jams his last 31, and big blind's never folding, so let's just do it now. Mullen. Mullen. Inopportune timing for limp show days king, and I ask big blind if she had queens, and she tells me no, she had deuces. Deuces? Especially in the big blind, where you can just close the action. I don't think I've ever seen someone play ducks like this. Don't get me wrong, I'm fine with a raise or fold approach, but facing a re-raise jam? Ducks are dogs behind all other pocket pairs, and they're 50-50 with everything else. Even if I'm getting all white magic on you, it's still a coin flip. Your chances with deuces are basically either 50% or 20%, and that's it. But I guess some people are just in love with their ducks. Rubber ducky, I'm awfully fond of you. Volvo Rodeo. Whoa, 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 whoa. Shut the fuck up, Ernie. Go back to frame 14249. Okay, enhance. So if she did have ducks, she would have rivered a set. Okay, clickbait may be misleading, but at least it's the truth. This was just a bald-faced lie. Why would she do that? These poker players keep lying to me. Sweetheart, they're poker players. I was feeling so good after those three straight flushes against Brad Owen. No way. How much did you win? A lot. And that'll do it for episode 14 of Slow Poker. Please like, subscribe, and comment below, and hit that notification bell. It really helps. But more importantly, if Devo says to make a giant bowl of whipped cream, drop everything, and whip it, whip it good. Until next time, this has been Slow Poker. It's not too late. Help me!